I finished my book. What's the name of your book? The Winter's Free by Frank Whiteman. What was the book all about? Frank Whiteman built a yacht in Cape Town single-handed and sailed it across the ocean to Trinidad. What do you think happened to the boat? I don't know, but I would love to see it. Let's go to Cape Town and find out. Okay. I've traveled from Maine to India, but I've never seen a place windier than the Cape. Down by the tavern of the sea. It was great to be back in Cape Town. The next day we drove to the VNA waterfront to start the search for a while. Down by the tavern of the sea. What luck! We walked straight into my old sailing friend Hansi Gillian. Hansi has been involved with the waterfront for years. He is a qualified skipper and he skippers various boats and he showed us around the most wonderful sailing yacht. After he had shown us the boat, we went for a drink. Libby, what are you doing in South Africa? Well, we're having a holiday. Oh, lovely. But we're also looking for something very special. We're looking for a boat called yes. Wilo. Have you heard yes. of Wilo? Yes, yes. That's Frank Whiteman's boat. Yeah. And Dick's read all the books about Wilo and he thinks that she might still be around. But we don't know where. I haven't, I haven't had any views about her for years and years. The last I know, um, he is, uh, Frank Whiteman stayed at Kral Bay Langebaar and uh, even after uh, he couldn't sail anymore he went to stay with Brian Lello at Oosterwal at, Lang at Langebaar and uh, yeah, he made lots of friends there so possibly somebody at Langebaar would be able to point us in the direction. And you think the boat might be in Langebaar? Could well be, yeah. uh, she spent most of her life there. Was, so, was yeah. she built there? Uh, now she was built uh, in Cape Town. Oh, well, I don't know where she was built. I don't know this. Under the clock tower. Yeah. Oh, she was built here. That's right. Yes. She was built uh, under the clock tower here. Oh, yeah. In Cape Town, ah. under the harbour. Ah. And uh, so, yeah, maybe it's, while we're here, we could possibly have a look here as well. Yes, yes. And uh, see what information we can do. Yeah. I think that's what Dick and I have to do. We just have to um, meet the The pulsar right is coming now with a change in the cake. And the shake as well. Thank you very much. Yeah. It was wonderful to meet up with old friends and Hans was very interested in the project so he decided to join us on our trip to Kralbai and Langebaan. Life's a breeze. I want a breeze. The next morning we left for the lagoon and after a hearty breakfast we drove to Kralbai or as Frank Weidman called it, the Kral. There we found houseboats and some yachts, but there was no sign of Wilo. In Langebaan we found a gentleman with the name Dominica Mera. He had known Frank Weidman in his younger years. His parents owned a shop in the main street. Frank was very fond of chocolate, he told us, and always had some slaps on his shopping list. Hij heeft die dinkie gehad wat hij met die ene roestvaan het hij mee gekom. En na dat, na hij die uh, Wailo verkoop het, het hij op uh, Oesterwal het hij geblij. En dan het ik hem altijd geneem, ek een keer een maand in de Kaapstad toe gegaan te bezig heen. En dan het ik van hem gevat tot op lange van weg, en daar het die bus gekry. En dan het hij so paar dagen in Kaapstad geblij. En dan het hij teruggekom 
met die bus en dan te kom weer op vertel en dan moest de wel toch op. Rooster Wallace placed in a lovely position on the lagoon with a view of Kraal Bay. We learned that Walo had been sold, possibly to somebody in Hout Bay. Frank Meitman is buried on a small graveyard in the field. The copper plate on the headstone shows a picture of Walo, his name and the day he died, February 23rd, 1970. The next day we drove to Hout Bay. Our first stop was the Hout Bay Yacht Club, but nobody could help us. We then tried some of the Marine Parade shops. Hello, I wonder if you can help me. I'm looking for the whereabouts of a very old wooden boat called Wilo. She was transported or sailed to Hout Bay about 30, 40 years ago. And uh, apparently she's stored somewhere here on the hillside. I think a good contact would be, I can't remember his Christian name, but it's uh, Mr. Nelson, and he was aptly named <laughs> for a seafarer, and he is a Toby, and the Toby officers are in a little uh, converted barn uh, opposite First National Bank in Hart Bay. Place down south where the oceans meet at the cape, down by the tavern of the sea. I am looking for a very old boat called Wilo. Have you ever heard of that name? I've certainly heard of the name, and she's in my garden. In your garden? In our garden at home in Hart Bay. And if you wish to see her, not a problem. Wow, fantastic! I was astonished. Not only did they know where Wilo was, Jenny and Henry owned Wilo. We all sat around the table and had a look at the photographs and they told us what happened to Wilo during the past 40 years. Richard Boberg had bought it from, from, what, 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 from Frank, what, I think, I'm not quite sure. And he had put legs on it so that he could work on the on the boat. And he'd actually more or less dumped the boat at Langer Barn. So Henry decided to buy it and fixed her up and sailed her to Cape Town and got her up on the um, on the side. I can't remember which part of the dock it was. It was near Glo um, Lone Harvest. Near Global Hollow and Harvison. Global, yes. Yeah. Then he launched her and went back up to Langerbahn and went to Simon's Town and sailed her quite quite regularly at that stage with. Um, who sailed with you, your brother? I'm my big brother. Yeah, Horatio. Horatio. Horatio, your brother Horatio. Then he finally took her out. He had her um, in Simon's Town harbour for quite some time and then decided it needed more work and quite a lot of work was needed and took her out of the water and put her in the shed at Philippi where he began a major restoration. So we found our house in Hart Bay, brought Wilo home and at that stage it was really not just on a hill, it was on a hill in the, in the middle of a forest in the middle of nowhere. We managed to do a bit of work on the boat and then a couple of years later, Henry had a stroke and things came to a bit of a standstill for a while. But now they'll get back to going again and get, getting her right and ship shape again. Finally, we were on the road to Wilo, the last stage of our request. At the end of the dirt road on the corner plot, we found her. Proudly, she stood there surrounded by trees. Wilo's hull was a copy of Islander, Harry Pigeon's boat which he sailed around the world. Wilo's deck was broad and spacious, but I noticed a lack of stanchions. I'm not surprised that Frank was concerned about his crew. Wilo's interior was empty, all fittings and furnishings had been removed. I could find no damage, no rut, and her hull was still sound. Her hull and deck are protected with fiberglass and resin. 
She will be protected for many years to come, but one day she will sail again. Remember what Frank Whiteman said when he launched her. May your life be long and prosperous. So raise your glasses and toast with me That place down south where the oceans meet at the Cape Down by the tavern of the sea Oh, cheers!